Hello everyone, with this video tutorial you will understand how to collect data for your target chemical or chemical list, if data are available. All sources of experimental data are located within the data module. Here, in the left panel there are two subsections, for the databases and for the inventories. The difference between the two is that the databases contain chemicals with experimental data, while the inventories only include chemicals without data. The databases are grouped according to the endpoint data they contain. If one database includes various endpoints, then the name of the database will appear in different groups. Such a database is the one compiling the non-confidential substance data that is submitted to the European Chemical Agency. In addition, this database and any other Euclid database could be presented in the toolbox data matrix in two ways, either as dossier or substances when the information will be organized according to the dossier subject, or as test materials, which means that the data will be organized according to the test material. For more information about this, please refer to the tutorial import of Euclid databases. The test materials option is selected by default. In order to retrieve data for your target chemical, you can select all or just some of the databases. If you have a defined target endpoint, as in this case, skin sensitization, you will see that some of the databases are colored in green. The green color indicates which are the databases containing data for the defined target endpoint. In other words, if you are interested in specific endpoint, you do not need to select all of the databases, but only the green ones. To see all green databases grouped together, you can go to the options and to select grouping according to the target endpoint. The other option here, to group databases according to the endpoint selected in the data matrix, could be used if there is no defined specific endpoint. When one of these options is selected, grouping the databases according to the target endpoint or according to the endpoint selected on the data matrix, all databases containing data for the endpoint of interest will be located at the top of the list and we can very easily select all of them by check the box in front of data available level. If the databases are grouped according to the selected endpoint option, then the databases above will correspond to the availability of data for the endpoint, currently selected on the data matrix. For example, if we click on the row, corresponding to genetic toxicity, then all databases containing Genetox data will be located at the top. The same will be when click on the acute toxicity row. Now, let's go back to the option and to group the databases according to the defined target endpoint and to select all highlighted databases. Once the databases are selected, click Gather Data button to collect the available data for your target chemical. Here, in the new pop-up window you can choose to collect all data for your target chemical, available in the selected databases or to collect only data for a specific endpoint. Let's collect all available data. In this case, no data is available for the target chemical. Thus, we may need to search for analogs having observed data that could be used to fill the data gap of this target chemical. In order to see how to search for analogs, watch the next video tutorial, focused on the category definition module. Now, let's enter another one chemical to see how we could analyze its data when available. As you already know, entering of a target chemical can be done within the input module. We will enter the chemical by its unique identification number. Several hits are identified, so we select the result with high relation between the structure and the registry number. Going back to the data module, where the databases have been already selected, we need just to click Gather button. Let's choose to collect only sensitization data. In this case, 12 data points are available for this chemical on the data matrix. The letter M here stands for measured data. You can see that a plus sign appears in front of sensitization level, which means that this level can be expanded. The new sublevels on the endpoint tree are defined based on the available observed data and they are forming the so-called dynamic part of the endpoint tree. The digits available for each row indicates the number of chemicals, in this case only one, and number of data points available on the respective row. For example, now there are seven data points for one chemical. You can see all data points by left click at the bottom of the row and then drag to expand it. In order to get more details on the test conditions and other supporting information available for these data points, just double click on the cell. Move to right through the columns to understand more about each data point, such as additional comments on the data, 
which is the database source, reliability, test guideline, and so on. For the experimental data coming from the exemplified database, there is a direct URL link to the original dossier of this data. Congratulations! Now you become familiar with collection and analysis of available experimental data in Toolbox. If you want to know more about QSAR Toolbox and how to search for analogs with data that could be used to fill the data gap of your target chemical, watch the video tutorial on category definition and data gap filling.